scene of this text. The scene took place during the Passover. Now all of us know in Jewish culture that there are three traditions that all Jews ought to celebrate. One of them is particularly the Passover. Let the church say the Passover. The Passover has to do with when the children of Israel found themselves in bondage and they cried out to God and God raises up an emancipator to become a liberator. Tell Moses go down and tell Pharaoh to let my people go. Moses goes down but Pharaoh will not hear it and God said I've had enough with Pharaoh at midnight I'm about to do something. So Moses tell the children of Israel find a lamb without spots. I want you to kill the lamb. I want you to take the blood from the lamb and put it over the doorpost because at midnight when the dead angel passes by he's going to see the blood and he's going to pass over your house I don't know who I came to preach on on a Friday night but would you give your neighbor a high five and say tonight I'm celebrating the Passover stuff that should have killed me stuff that should have destroyed me stuff that should have wiped me out a long time but the mere fact that I'm still here I'm going to celebrate the Passover. Is there anybody of the song of my voice who know that the bullet should have killed you? The drug should have destroyed you. Stuff should have wiped you out. But aren't you glad that you got the Passover? Just wave over your head and say this shout is not for the money. It's not for the honey. It's not for the car. It's not for the job. It's not for the house. It's the stuff that the Lord has allowed to pass over me. The only people who don't need to shout right here is the people who ain't been through nothing. But if you've been through something, if you've seen something, if you experienced something, and the Lord has allowed it to pass over you, I'll give you five seconds to open your mouth, throw your head back, and scream for the Passover. Come on, holler for the Passover. Give your neighbor a high five and tell him this shout is for the stuff that the Lord has allowed to pass over me. There it is. The scene is taking place during the Passover. And Jesus and the disciple, come on, sit down. We just talking. Jesus and the disciple are reclining around the table it's a passover meal that's set in front of them and none of them but jesus knew what was about to take place in the same text at the beginning of the chapter it talks about judas betraying jesus it talks about in the same text about judas betraying jesus and yet after Jesus has been betrayed, he never lost his appetite. Oh God, I'm going somewhere. The same night that he was betrayed, he had an appetite. This is just for 20 of y'all who ever experienced betrayal in your life. Tell your neighbor, say, neighbor, don't you lose your appetite because somebody betrayed you. In fact, the night that you were betrayed, that's when you ought to eat. God, I wish I, I said the night that you were betrayed, that's when you want to eat. Don't you let anybody make you lose your sleep or lose your appetite. In fact, you don't know who's watching on social media. Somebody might be a hater thinking that you won't go make it. So you might as well go ahead and remind them in spite of the betrayal, I'm still alive. In spite of the betrayal, I'm still here. In spite of the betrayal, I still got my joy. In spite of the betrayal, I'm still hungry. Are there any survivors who ever been betrayed but you're live to tell it the same night somebody hollered the same night the same night he was betrayed he asked for Popeyes the same night that he was betrayed he had a meal the same night that he was betrayed and remember now he experienced betrayal and denial in your life, you're going to have three people. You're going to have people who are going to betray you. 
You're going to have people who are going to deny you, and you're going to have people that love you. Can I preach up in here? Look down your road say, which one are you? Come on, get an answer. Come on, get an answer. Get an answer. You're going to have people who are going to betray you. They are Judas's. They may look like John, but they are Judas's. They share, oh, come on, can I preach up in here? Because you cannot have John without Judas. And that's why if you're going to ask God to send you a John, you got to watch out for Judas because John and Judas look the same. Can I preach up in here? I said John and Judas look the same. In fact, John and Judas are at the same table. So whenever you are in the company of three, you got to size the room up and you got to say which one is John and which one is Judas. Can I help you all in understanding that? This is how you know if you got a John or Judas. It's when you are naked, they don't get naked with you. God, y'all ain't ready for me. Okay, y'all miss it. I said, you know it's a Judas, where you is the only one that is naked in the room. Tell your neighbor, say, if I'm the only one that is showing my boo-boo, I may be sitting next to Judas. Because when you got a John next to you, they're going to reveal exactly what they're going through. And ain't just going to be hearing your stuff. They're going to be sharing their stuff. Dr. William Houston Curtis, one of my preachers from years ago, said, Jazz, my issue has never been, my issue has never been what I shared, it's been who I shared it with. Oh, Jesus. God, deliver us from Judas's. Deliver us from women who we trust our secrets with. And because of opportunities, y'all ain't ready for me. Because they're trying to climb the corporate or the church ladder, they will sell you out. I wish I, but tell you, Mr. Neighbor, tonight, you ain't, okay, are y'all talking decent neighbor tonight? You ain't got to worry about any Judas because all Judas end up hanging in themselves. I gotta get out of here. Pull your neighbor, say, neighbor, just give them a little rope because the ditch they dig for you, they're gonna end up falling in it. I need somebody to shout over every hater, over every lie. Oh, oh Judas, somebody call all oh, Judas. All you gotta do is give them a little, give them a little, give them, just give them a little. Give them a little rope. And it's like when you go home, just mail them a rope in the mail. Just, just, oh, y'all ain't hearing me. Just, just send them a rope. Come on up in here. He prepares a table for me. In the presence, I feel my preaching here. In the presence of my enemy. He anointed my head with oil. But my cup run it over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow. In the night that he was betrayed. He ordered pizza in the night when he was betrayed. He had five fish, collard greens, corn bread. Because a betrayal can't stop your destiny, God. I feel something pushing me. I push on your neighbor. Say, neighbor, every lie that they said about you is just to prepare you for your next level. Everything that they try to do against you was just to prepare you. I feel something pushing me real hard. Push on your neighbor's back like you're about to push it out. And say, neighbor, you survive every lie. You survive every gossip. You survive what they said about you. You survive it. Are there any survivors in the house? In the night, in the night that he was betrayed. But listen, O'Neal, we got to be honest in here. Because while we have been betrayed, some of us have betrayed others. Oh, can I preach up in here? I said, while we've been betrayed, we have betrayed others we betrayed others by telling other people's secret in the form of pray for this person uh, you know how we sugarcoat it and spiritualize it hey listen i want you to pray for this person because they're going through so and so and knowing that they told it to you in confident or in secret but i learned something linda i learned something in the year of my finally me i learned that the greatest betrayal 
does not come from others. It comes from how I betray myself. Oh, Jesus. God, I feel like preaching here. I know, I know, I know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Your greatest betrayal is sitting in you. You remember when you.